So I have three assets here. This is the last one I brought in. It has really thick lines compared to everything else. So this is a little, a little advanced, but worth seeing. What if I want to thin these lines out to be about half the width? How can I do that? So this is what I would do. First of all, I'm going to turn off the background so I can see the white and the black pixels. The first thing I need to do is delete all the white pixels, even if it's on multiply mode. So I use my magic wand. The magic wand is a more advanced selection tool than the lasso, and it's the next one we'll learn. And if it doesn't say magic wand, then it's going to be one of these other options that's in the drawer, and we're going to learn the magic wand. Just like in the lasso option, there are some other lassos. We're always just going to use the regular lasso. So the magic wand has options at the top. We're going to use all of these default options. Notice that contiguous is unchecked, and I'm going to click on the white pixels within that layer. There we go. And it's going to select all the white pixels. Then, just like when I used the lasso, I want to delete something, I'm going to delete all the white pixels by clicking or pressing delete. So now I've just got the thick black lines. Now what I can do is I can double click on the layer. Not on the image of the layer, but on the, the gray around the highlighted layer. And this brings up something called layer styles, which we'll be learning. Not necessarily for this project, but it, if we wanted to thin the lines, this is how we could do it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click next to stroke, which is an outline around each line. And then I'm going to click on the stroke options. And instead of that stroke being black, which thickens the lines, this is how we would thicken lines. I'm going to make the stroke white. So with that color field, I'm going to choose the upper left-hand corner, solid white. Then, where it says position, I'm not going to position it outside of my lines. I'm going to position it inside of my lines. And then I'm going to play with the scaling until it thins my lines to where I like them. Like maybe right there. So that's four pixels. I could try five pixels for a little bit thinner. But if I thin it too much, right, I'm not going to have any image left. Yeah, so I think four is about what I want. And then hit OK. Now what you're actually seeing here is your image with a white outline around it. So now what you need to do, which is kind of really crazy, is you're going to right click on it and you're going to say rasterize the layer style so that then memorizes those white pixels and then you're going to use magic wand again you're going to click on the white pixels and then you're going to delete and now you have thinner black lines than you had before so i can use that same technique to thicken lines so on this one which has white pixels i'm going to use my magic wand select on the white delete it all Deselect, then I'm going to zoom in so I can see the individual line, and I'm going to double click on the layer to open up the layer styles right here. And I'm going to go to stroke, and it should remember my last settings, which used a white stroke on the inside to make the lines thinner. But I don't want to make them thinner, I want to make them thicker. So I'm going to change it from white to black. And I'm going to position them on the outside of the line. And because this line had like a little bit of a, an anti-alias blur on it, I'm actually going to position it to the center and then grow it a little bit bigger. And that's going to clean up my line art. So maybe about eight pixels. And you can always type it in. So what's happening is I'm using plus, I'm using a command plus to zoom in, but because I'm clicked on options rather than on my image, it's zooming in on the browser window. So if you click up here in your browser and you hit command plus, it will make all of your tools bigger. 
But if you click on your image and you do Command Plus, it will zoom in on your image. And so you can see where the original line is and now where my new line is. And then I'm going to right click and rasterize the layer style and then deselect. And now I have thicker lines than I did before. So that's how you can thin lines and thicken lines. And I might do that for this one as well. I'm going to select all the white. And this is an example of sometimes PhotoP is a little slow because I'm asking a lot of it, but it will do it eventually. And then I'm going to layer style. And I'm going to make this one just a little bit thicker, but not that much thicker. Maybe about three pixels thicker. There we go. And now I'm going to rasterize that layer style. How do you know there's a layer style? Because you have this little effects drop down, and that shows you the stroke. Once you rasterize it, that all gets blended into the layer. And now I have thicker lines than I did before. Okay, I'll turn on my white background. And maybe before I delete or add more, I'm going to show you a really nice technique for using the magic wand. This time I'm going to click contiguous. So this is time it's only going to select pixels that are touching each other. And I'm going to click within these certain shapes. And I'm going to hold down shift and add a few of these. And I'm selecting the white shapes. Okay, now if I turn off the, uh, the eyeball, you can see that the selections are still there. And then I'm going to move that selection to a different layer, like this layer. Select the layer, and then delete, but only from those chunks. So that when I turn them on again, they will look like they're blended into each other. And I'll, I'll review that at the beginning of next class, too. Okay, so now let's get some more on there and save our work. At any time, I can just say File, Save, and it will update that PSD that I saved to my desktop. And now I want to bring in two more. So I'm going to bring this one in, and I'm going to immediately rotate it, shrink it a little bit, and rasterize it. Maybe use the magic wand with contiguous turned off to get rid of all the white. And then because I rasterized it, I can use my lasso and I can immediately get rid of some of this circle that's encompassing it. And again, be very willing to cut into your image, right? We're trying to isolate the lines here. So we don't need to be precious about it. And we can always do Command Z or use our history if we uh, want to take back a step. Now let's add one more in there. And this is my last one which doesn't have any white pixels to start with. But I'm going to hold down shift and squeeze this one a little bit and rotate it. And I'm really zooming in. These are high quality Pixabay pixels. And then I'm going to rasterize and then I'm going to cut away a lot from it. And now I might just go through different layers and start cutting things away. To reveal different parts. And this is where you can see it's really not about what was originally there. 
It's about the composition you want to create. And one technique I really like is using the magic wand. It's conceptually a little tricky to understand, but we're going to get lots of practice. It's that selections, any selection you make, whether it's with the magic wand or whether it's with the lasso, I just did the lasso here, those selections move between layers. So I meant to erase this layer, so I hit delete, but I can also use that same selection and delete from other layers. Like, nope, not there, like here. Now, one technique I really enjoy is to take an asset that has a lot of enclosed shapes. So I used this one before. Let's see if there's another one. Yeah, this one seems pretty good. You see all of these shapes that are fully enclosed? I'm going to select that layer and use the magic wand with contiguous turned on. And I'm going to click within these shapes and hold down shift so I can do multiple selections. And the beak of this bird. Maybe some of these. I'm clicking the white space within them. Bless you. Okay, now, if I turn off the eyeball, you'll see those selections. Just like if I drew them with my, with my magic wand. But these were with the, or not with the lasso, but these are with the magic wand. Now I can move that through other layers. So for instance, I can go on this layer and I can cut those shapes out just by hitting delete, but the selection's still there. And I can go to this layer up above, and I can delete. And wherever these shapes overlap with it, it will cut them out. I can go to this layer, as long as the layer is selected, and delete. I can go to this final layer on the bottom. I have to make sure it's selected, get PhotoP to catch up with me, and then delete. So now, that just seems arbitrary, but because I got the area I was deleting from this layer, now that will help it sink, sink in kind of more seamlessly with the other layers around it. See how now all those spaces are cleared in all the different layers. So this is getting close to what I want. And at the beginning of next class, I'll be able to clean it up more. And we'll use our, our tablets to get a little bit more precise. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sources. And I'm going to save my work. File, save. I'm going to go hit function F11 and see that my work is saved. I'm going to mark it green so I know where to start next time. And then I'm going to move that into my exercise one folder. And then it's saved. I can close PhotoP. I can close all of these different tabs. I can log out of ACES so that the next student using the computer doesn't accidentally get into my account. And if I want to back up my work, I have this thumb drive. I plug it into the back of the computer. That's where it's going to work fastest. And if I don't have that available, I can plug it into the keyboard opposite where the mouse plugs in. These are all USB ports. It will show up. Here is my drive. I don't want to back it up. All right. And that's my morning class. So all I have to do to back up this one is to drag that whole folder with my face and just drag it into my disk. And it will make a duplicate of it. 
best practice.